Welcome back to Ignite. My name is Pauline, and today I'm here with Anisu, Raymond, Mike, and Miriam. I hope you guys are doing just fine. Um, if you'd like to contact us, our handles are in the description below. If you'd like to feature in any of our videos, do not hesitate to contact us. Guys, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe! Sir, so let's just pray before we go into praise and worship. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord God, I just want to thank you for what you have done for us today, Lord. I want to pray for whoever's watching this video. I want to pray that you continue to be with them, Lord. I just want to pray for the families, Lord. Please be with them, protect them. You know what the heart desires. I pray that you help them, Lord. I pray that you give to them what they need from you, Lord. We exalt your name and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So now let's go into praise and worship. Bye! I've carried the burden too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. So 
Hi everyone, welcome back to Ignite Online. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for tuning in once again. Um, we're going to continue in our series on relationship over religion. And uh, I hope you enjoyed part one that was last week. Please do go back and visit it. We try to keep our messages very, very short so that the episodes are nice and compact. So it's not going to take you a long time. Download it. Listen to it while you're washing dishes. Um, turn it into an audio drive and listen to it in, in your car. Um, it's not going to take very long to, to recap. So as we go into part two today, let's just go together in a word of prayer. Lord, we give you praise and we thank you because you're our Father and you're our God. Um, we're just going to enjoy your word today and hope that we learn something, um, hope that we grasp something, hope all of that uh, even today throughout the session, no matter what element of the episode, that you, oh God, be praised and be glorified, even as we open up uh, your word and uh, chat about relationship over religion. We give you praise and we thank you for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, yeah. Um, Today, as I promised, we're going to do a let's define the relationship. If we're going to pick relationship and not religion, what kind of relationship is this? So we're going to take it from Matthew 6, starting from um, verse 9. I'm going to read in the New Living Translation. This is Matthew 6, starting from verse 9. Um, and I just want to grab something very simple. The Lord Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray. I'm going to re recommend a series by Andy Stanley. It's called Grown Up Prayers. I believe it's still on YouTube and it's still up on, on their page, on Andy Stanley's page. Um, the disciples observed Jesus and they noticed that now there's something they're not quite getting right. And that's something that was emphasized in that series that Jesus didn't come and say, okay, look guys, you guys think you know how to pray, let me teach you. It's the disciples themselves that observed and said, hey, hang on. Um, Jesus, teach us how to pray. And then he said, this is how you should pray. You should say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Um, in NLT it says, Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. And uh, what I'm trying to emphasize and what I'm grabbing here, and you're going to see it in the, in the Grown Up Prayer series as well. He could have chosen any other title. This is God himself in the flesh teaching his people how to pray. And of all the descriptions he could have used. He used Father. And we could use the temptation to overlook that. The temptation to say, okay, no, 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 I'm gonna make this prayer personal. I'm gonna say my provider in heaven. 
my demon destroyer in heaven, my this and my that in heaven. Those things are fine. Even the Hebrews have, um, Jewish people, sorry, have different names for God and that's fine. But the Lord Jesus helped us define our relationship here. And you can even look in the Greek, do a Google search. Um, is this something that's interchangeable? I did it myself and I checked. Nope, even in the Greek, he meant father. Now I'm nailing this point to death because we could miss out on something if we decide to overlook this part. God in his infinite wisdom, Jesus in on earth as he walked among us chose to use the word father because that in his infinite wisdom is the closest he could get in a way that we could understand and right away this could be a problematic concept for a lot of people because perhaps you don't have the best relationships with your father so your reference point for the word father is not great or perhaps you have a great relationship with your father and here on earth and um, maybe it's not the most mature. Maybe your father is a father Christmas type of father. Anything you ask for, you get. And when you approach God in the same way as father and you don't get that, it becomes a problem. My advice and my suggestion is let's throw that away. Let's look at our heavenly father, who is a father in his own right. And this is a relationship that we need to respect in its own boundaries. So let's look at Luke 15, verse 70. Um, we're still with the story of the prodigal son who asked for his inheritance early and he spent it and he landed in a lot of trouble, broke, depressed and washed up. And he remembered that, no, 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 I'm here eating pig's food. Why don't I go back home? Even my servants, even the servants in my father's house don't eat pig's food. So he went back and the father embraced him and there was a celebration. But this is his thought process. This is from verse 17. It said, when he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare. And here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. So what I wanted to just grasp from this section is he knew and understand the ins and outs of the relationship he has with his father. He understood the parameters, he understood the borders, he understood the, the protocols. He had an awareness of the fact that he messed up and that there's expectations in this relationship and they have not been met. But did he come back to those protocols? Did he come back to those expectations? Did he come back to those borders? Those expectations, those protocols, those borders exist. But he came back, not to them, but he came back to the relationship. He came back to his father. So I'm going to just encourage you. That's, my just, that's just my short encouragement to you. Not to look at Christianity as the machine like I said last week, a religious system. You are investing in a relationship. And just like in any other relationship, we are do's and don'ts. I, I guess maybe that that's our problem sometimes. We look at our relationship with God and we want to have a say and more than a say sometimes we want what we want to be the existing reality of the relationship 
So in the same way that you have a father here on earth, in the same way that you have a friend, in the same way that you have a teacher, in the same way that you have a superior at work, all those relationships are not normally in your control. All those relationships are not normally defined by you in terms of the ins and outs of those relationships. It's more or less most of the time you meeting each other at a certain point. I'm not even going to say halfway because it may not even feel like halfway in most cases. If we can have that mindset for our relationships here, I believe that's the mindset we need to adopt with our relationship with our Heavenly Father. Just like this prodigal son who is showing an awareness that um, he has sinned against both heaven and God. <laughs> um, he has sinned against both heaven and his father. Okay, that's what it says in verse 18. Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. He understands that there are things that just need to be respected in this relationship. So if it's a choice to be in this relationship, it's about going to the Holy Word of God and understanding God's character and saying, okay, I'm going to come away from just complying. I'm going to actually be in relationship so that even compliance, even following is made easier because I am in a relationship, not a religion. Never substitute this. Never substitute a relationship with your father for a religion. We're going to stop there. Then we're going to take it and wrap up next week. I hope you're blessed. Thank you very much for listening. Today, I'm going back home. How did I end up here, so far away, desperately needing to go back? I'll tell you, it all began when I left. At that time I came and I seized everything that was mine and quickly snatched it away. I was set on leaving, therefore I tugged and tore myself away. And there I was. A distant place far beyond the horizon I had left behind me. And here, I took everything I had and everything I was and carelessly discarded it. Shoveled it up and cast it off to sea. The boy I was, when he was home, was himself no more. Like a porous wineskin, I dripped until I could drip no more. I also met consequence. She left my lips a stone. Even sleep would not comfort me, for my blankets were hunger and my pillows were the cold. And as I closed my eyes, my dreams were to become like the swines. Oh. How lavishly they lived. Yeah, that is where I found myself. But sense did return to me. And I thought of home, the warm haven from which I came, my father's house. The greatest treasure of this barren wasteland is dwarfed by even the tiniest jewels from home, the smallest gems from the haven I turned away from. Rise, my feet. Let humility soothe your toes and let your heels be soft, that you may walk, that we may be spurred on to the home we left. So, I did just that. I returned. Nearer and nearer I came.
Now, as far as the horizon, there my father saw me. And just as lightning tears through the sky, he bolted. In the binding flesh, I was met with embrace. Celebration erupted there. Every wisp in the air was painted in joy. All this for this that he said to me. Son, you were lost, drowned in the pitch waters of death. But here you are, the breath of life emerging once more from your lungs, at long last, home again.